We have cleaned up the outside edges. We know where all our layers are. We've gotten rid of any layers we're not using. So now it's all about color correcting. And I'm gonna do this from the head on back. So I'm gonna start with the portions of the head. Now there are two ways to color correct. One is with adjustments, these overall adjustments. And I did that already a little bit for the head. But if I go to image adjustments, the first one is levels. These are direct adjustments. They affect everything in the layer. And I just push the midtones either brighter or darker. And this, what I love about this is you wouldn't know exactly what you're trying to do, but you can recognize what's helpful. Now that it's cut out, I think it started at one. I think it needs to be just a touch brighter. And then I'm actually going to limit the highlights a little bit with this slider. And then I can try goosing the shadows, but doing that will very quickly lose pixel content. So I don't think I need to do that. I just brightened it a tiny bit and then limited the highlights. Next, I'm going to go to image adjustments, color balance. This is the magic one. I can put some of the orange and yellow lighting. It's the color temperature. So I'm going to start always in the midtones, and I'm going to shift it a little towards yellow. Not too much, because then I lose pixel content again. I replace colors with other colors, but just a little bit. I'm going to move it a little bit towards the red. You see how that warms it all up? There's that green there, which I don't want, but it doesn't mean that I can just shift it and have no greens. I just have to kind of keep everything in mind. Then I'm going to go to shadows and I'm going to bring back the blues by pushing a little bit towards cyan and towards blue. Then I'm going to go to the highlights and I'm going to push it towards greens, a little bit towards reds, a little bit towards yellows. So let's see what that did. This is what it was before. That's with levels. That's with color balance. There it is. It took off kind of that, that bluish sheen that it had. Next, the big guns, adjustments, hue saturation. This is optional, but it can be helpful to see. If I just push all of the colors in the spectrum a little bit to one side or the other, is one or the other better? And maybe going a little bit to the right is helpful. All right. The other way, this is a new tool that you can affect color and I need it here, is with what's called the sponge tool. And you can also affect lighting, which would be levels. So we can do it with image adjustment. That affects an entire layer or an entire selection. If you want to control it like you control a brush or an eraser, you're going to do it this way. You're going to go above the T to this tool drawer, and it's dodge, burn, and sponge. And for instance, I want to darken this in levels. I don't want to darken over here. I just want to darken right here. So I'm going to use what's called the burn tool. The burn tool, I'm going to make pressure sensitive with my tablet. And I'm going to set it just like I would set an eraser brush at low opacity. So never more than 30. Because the exposure can go real fast otherwise. And the range always mid-tones, always with a large 0% hardness brush. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of tool marks that you don't want. Is it 0% hardness? 0% hardness, so okay. it blends. Otherwise, you're going to get a hard edge from where you click. Okay, now, this is what the burn tool does. It takes the pixels within that layer, and it's going to darken the midtones only where I click. And because it's a soft edge brush, it's going to blend that with what's around it. Now, I can overdo this very quickly and go to black, and I don't want that. That's why we, we do an exposure that's less than 30, sometimes only a little bit. But that's a, a huge difference in my history before burning. So let's burn it in just the right places. Just get that edge to, to sit back a little bit, only in the midtones. If you ever burn shadows, you get to solid black right away.
All right, it's still not the right color, but now it's getting to be the right darkness to not be confusing. And I can also do that up here. Do that anywhere I think I need a little bit more shadow. All right. Now, I'm going to use what's called the sponge tool to affect the color. You can set the sponge to be either saturating, intensifying the color, or desaturating. Because it's green, I want to desaturate it. Because I don't want it to be so colorful. I want it to go towards gray. And then the brush, same thing, 0% hardness, big brush around 200 pixels. And then I just hit it once or twice take out some of that green and then I can go back to my burn tool it will remember my settings and darken it a bit we'll use that more when we're finishing this off but those are the tool adjustments dodge burn and sponge dodge gives highlights so I might as well show you dodge same thing Make it pressure sensitive, less than 30. I'll usually do less than 20. Only on the mid-range, 0% hardness, large brush. Where do I want some highlights? Maybe along this top edge. Maybe brighten them on the horn. And then I can always burn it as well, just at the very tip. So you can really kind of create your own sense of lighting direction with dodge, burn, and sponge. Yeah, that's starting to, to turn around in a nice way. And it helps to have drawing knowledge and know about core shadows and reflected light and all that, but we can control that. So now let's move back from there. Keep playing with the color. So I have the eye. I'm going to keep that separate and I'm going to just work on the direct adjustments. I'll save my work quick of this head. And I kind of like the color as it is. So I'm not going to do anything too drastic to it. I'm just going to see if it's better, lighter or darker. And it's kind of best right where it was. If I limit the highlights, yeah, if I limit the highlights, it's a little bit more believable, not catching as much. If I limit the shadows, no, I pretty much want that shadow density. So then I go to color balance, and I see if I shift the midtones, always start with the midtones, maybe a little bit towards red in magenta, maybe a little bit towards the blues be interesting basically I'm trying to get more color out of this so now in the shadows I'm gonna to go towards the cools just a little and then in the highlights I'm gonna to go towards the warms this is when you actually like the colors of your thing you just want to bring them out so it's really subtle but it can make a big difference so it started here levels gave me this just took the, the shine off of it and then color balance gave me so I have pinks and greens and blues kind of all together instead of it feeling like it's more limited. You'll just have to take my word for it. <laughs> and now I can go for the big guns and see if it's useful. Hue saturation, a little bit more this way, a little bit more that way. Definitely, if anything, to the left a little bit, but not much. I'll just do minus one. And then I could just take the saturation down as well, or amp it up. But I want it to be fairly saturated. Because it's the focal point of my creature. Okay, now the eye, I think I'm fine with the eye as is. So this rhino, the problem is the rhino's gray. How can I get this color out of that gray rhino? 
you'll be surprised at how much color is actually in there. So first I start with levels. Do I want to brighten it? No, I want to darken it, I think. It's in shadow. I can go back to levels. You can do this as many times as you want. Do I want to limit the highlights? Maybe a little bit. Limit the shadows just a little bit. Okay, now color balance. Let's really push it. Highlights toward, well, let's start with the midtones. Let's warm it up. See, there's color there. I don't want to push these too far or I, it starts interfering with other colors. But I can warm it up in the midtones, warm it up in the highlights towards red and yellow. And then in the shadows, cool it down so it gets more dimensional. Like that. So what did that do? Levels, color balance. Now I can try with hue saturation. Changes general hue. Yeah, that's kind of working. That helps. Okay. And now that all the things in the head have been adjusted, now I can start blending them with this rough underneath. But it makes sense to do the same adjustments to this white fur and white is where you'll really see this make a difference so it starts with levels i can push the white brighter i can push it a little bit darker in the midtones i'm going to keep it right about where it was i can limit the highlight a little bit limit the shadows i don't want to do it too much okay now color balance it's under image adjustments, color balance. Start with the midtones. I want to push it towards green or towards magenta. A little bit towards magenta. A little bit towards cyan. Just making it match on those edges. Shadows. A little bit bluer. And highlights go a little bit warmer. Okay, now I'm ready to go in with my eraser at a low opacity, like 15%. Soft edged brush. And instead of erasing away from the white, I'm going to erase away from the rhino head as it sits on the white. And I'm just going to let it look like it's emerging from that white fur. That's all there is to it. I'm going to use pressure sensitivity so I can be really, really accurate as I get around things that I want to be sharp edges, like the, uh, like the ear. And that helps to blend them together. Right. I can also do that on the the chin. Come on, select it for me. And on this internal edge, because this is fur overlapping scales, this edge can be softened a little bit because the fur is somewhat translucent and wouldn't look like it's a hard edge. But I'm doing it at a pretty low opacity so I can